Hello, hi, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel if it's your first time here. My name's Jim. We are listening to 2112. It's been a long time. I started a, <laughs> I started, we got two albums in to a series where we were going to be listening to all of Rush. Um, now, I do realise that we actually missed off the initial album, um, the very, very, very first one. I don't know why that happened, but I just, I haven't got it. So we started with uh, Fly By Night, we then did Caressor Steel, we are now up to 1976's 2112. Um, the story behind this, I always find, I find this actually really interesting. Um, the album, or so their record label, was ready to drop them. Uh, the previous album, Cressa Steel, had performed very, very badly, hadn't done what they were hoping for it to do, and, and basically said, yeah, bro, we don't want you anymore. And they managed to sort of persuade the label to give them another chance. And the, the label said, OK, come up with some commercial hits and, and all will be good. So Rush went away and said, nope, we're going to come up with a 20-minute a prog sci-fi epic on side one. And then two or three tracks to fill up the other side. How many have we got on side three, actually? Side two. Side three? <laughs> side two. Um, uh, five. We've got Passage to Zangkok. Uh, Where's that? We have a passage to Bangkok, the Twilight Zone, Lessons, Tears, and Something for Nothing. Um, side one is one track, 2112, but it's made up of uh, of seven parts. We have Overture, The Temples of Syrinx, Discovery, Presentation, Oracle, The Dream, Soliloquy, and Grand Finale. Um... I don't know when it was, about three years ago, I actually did listen to this single song, 2112, on the channel, but uh, we've not done the whole album. So anyway, that's what we're doing. We're getting back to Rush. We are listening to 2112, all of it, because it's fab. <laughs> we've got loads of Rush to go. I mean, this will keep us going for years yet, all the Rush stuff. And I know, yes, exactly. People say, oh, you haven't played any Yes for Ages. I know. I don't know, you know, there's, there's too much music in the world. I can't play it all. I will play some more Yes at some point. I'll play some more Iron Maiden. I'll play some more Traffic. I'll play some more Chicago. Everything that everybody wants. Yes, I will play it. But, you know, you start a channel and play your music, eh? <laughs> ah, Yes. I haven't listened to this track for a while, for a long, long time. Never get the time right on this.
I love this track. I love it so much. Such a clever little piece, this. So sort of childlike, isn't it? Sort of a child finding a guitar. What do you do with it? What is this thing? What is this strange? That's, that's pretty much the lyrics of the song, but.
What can this strange device be? When I touch it, it gives forth a sound. It's got wires that vibrate and give music. What can this thing be that I've found? Great transitions. Now, I know this going into this next bit of the song. Yes.
Sleep is still in my eyes, the dream is still in my head. I heave a sigh and sadly smile and lie a while in bed. I wish that it might come to pass, not fade like gone. breakdown. Rush. 
Was there anyone doing music like this? And I'm not talking about Yes, I'm not talking about Pink Floyd, I'm not talking about all those other sort of uh, early uh, frog bands, because they weren't. They weren't doing this. Not like this. Led Zeppelin weren't doing this. phenomenal there are a lot of um, uh, fans of bands like Yes like Tull like uh, Emerson Lake and Palmer who kind of not dismissive of Rush but just a little bit sort of oh you know they, they came they weren't the first though they weren't the first I think Rush were so important as a band um to move progressive music forward in a way that these other bands weren't. Now, I'm not taking anything away from it. Of course I'm not, because the, there is no one like Yes. There is no one like ELP. There is no one like Jethro Tull and a, a million other bands. But there is something so absolutely unique and... Um, accessible about Rush that a lot of um, other music hadn't done and they were taking the, the heavier elements of of the bands like Sabbath and of Led Zeppelin and uh, Uriah Heep and wh whoever else there might have been um, and Blending it together with this much more interesting songwriting that they sort of hinted at a little bit before, but hadn't really sort of struck out and done. And I think this is the first time I'm aware of. I mean, prove me wrong. Show me elsewhere. I think this is the first time where a heavy rock slash metal proto metal band, because metal was only sort of really new, wasn't it? Um, had done this and. I think, I mean, there may have been another band that would have done it if the Rush hadn't been there, but Rush were there. They were the band to do it. They were the ones to innovate and to move forward and to create this really new sound that is now so fundamental in a lot of the sort of progressive rock, metal, um, and just straight metal that you hear now. Um, it's a, there's a, a line that can be drawn all the way through, and you've got to you've got to hand it to them. Uh, not only have they done something amazing, but they've done it with flair. They've done it with musicianship that is off the charts. They've done it with um, tunes, melody, and something which is you recognise and you want to get back into, and you hear it over and over and over again. You can never hear it enough times. Um, saying that, I've not listened to this record for a really long time, and I realise as soon as you start to listen to it, how comfortable it is. It's like putting on a pair of old old slippers or something, you know. It's a ah oh, yes, I know where I am. I'm I'm in my my comfortable zone here. I know every drum fill, every guitar part, every little bass line, every pause and change, and it's just you know it like the back of your hand and. That's a that's just, just a lovely thing. Um, I love Rush. I love Rush. Uh, I love early Rush, and that's the thing. I've I kind of know lots of Rush, but I don't know lots of Rush whole albums, and that's kind of what this little series is going to be about. So. Um, We've got loads to listen to. Obviously we have. We've got many, many albums to go. It's four years. 
since uh, Neil Peart died. That's, uh, that's how, where, where's that time gone? It's just unbelievable. I remember the, the shock of that happening, how, oh my God, I'm, I cannot believe that's happened. And how it affected so many people. Um, and it's gone in a blink of an eye, isn't it? Time waits for no one. <laughs> oh, boy. Right. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you're looking forward to side two, because I am. <laughs> I'll see you all on the next video, whenever and whatever that is. Until then, this is Jim, over and out. <laughs>